Hello and welcome. My name is Glenn Seafelt. I'm one of the pastors at Nativity Lutheran Church in St. Anthony, Minnesota. Thank you for participating in online worship. As we continue to deal with the crisis of COVID-19, we will not be resuming in-person worship. In order to do what's best for loving and caring for our neighbor, especially those most vulnerable, we all need to do our part to help stem the spread of this virus. I am grateful that we can join together via the miracle of technology. A word about who we are at Nativity. Whether we are in face-to-face -face or via technology, we are still church. And as a church, we aspire to be a community of faith where people feel like they belong. An inclusive community of faith that loves and accepts people as they are, wherever they are in their journey of faith. We aspire to do this with justice, loving kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Would you please join me and let us pray for our time together. O oh, loving God, we worship you in thankfulness and praise. May this time of worship bless you and grant us faith. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. If you are watching this worship service with someone, please reach over and greet them with God's peace. I also encourage you to take time today or throughout the coming week and share God's peace with someone, someone that needs to know that God's peace is there for them. Thank you.
gather round children, snuggle up with a parent or a friend or your favorite animal, today we are going to talk about Thanksgiving and Native people. The people who lived in Minnesota a long time ago, people who lived here before any of our families ever moved to Minnesota, and people who still live here today. The Native people were part of families called the Dakota and Ojibwa. Did you know that the name Minnesota comes from the Dakota word meaning sky-tinted water or waters colored like the sky? Thanksgiving is a good time to remember our Native brothers and sisters because some very sad things happened to them. Sad things that we don't want to ever happen again. In our reading from the Bible, we meet Jeremiah. He was a special friend of God, and he wants us to know that God wants us to love others and share what we have with others, not take their things. There was a bad king who took things from people and rather than share his things. And Jeremiah and God were very sad about that. A long time ago, people moving to Minnesota took things from the native people, their land. God is very sad about this. God wants us to remember to always share what we have. Will you pray with me? Please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for native people, their families, and their friendship. Help us to learn from our mistakes of the past. Help us to share what we have. We love you, God. Amen. We continue with our Read Through the Bible sermon series, and we are now in the book of Jeremiah, referred to as one of the major prophets of the Hebrew Scriptures. Last week, we heard how another major prophet, the prophet Isaiah, warned the leaders of the northern kingdom that they are far away from what God desires. Their greed and their power-hungry treaties will be their downfall, and indeed it was. For today's reading, we fast forward about 100 years to the reign of King Jehoiakim, around 600 BCE. Jeremiah warns the king and the people in power that the people of Judah, the southern kingdom, are struggling to survive. Stop honoring yourself rather than God. Stop the power grabbing and the greed. And Jeremiah calls the temple a den of thieves, a phrase Jesus later uses. Jeremiah warned of the impending doom, the chaos that was about to happen if the king doesn't change the way he is caring for them. The people of Judah will give up. They're weakened by starvation. There's no spirit left in them. They will be easily taken captive by invading armies. Jeremiah Speaking the truth to Bauer resulted in Jeremiah being banned from the temple courtyard, a place where communications took place. Banned from the temple, God gives Jeremiah some new instructions. Write the words on a scroll. This was the first time in ancient Hebrew history that the Word of God was written down on a scroll. And it was done so that they could be preserved, preserved so future generations will remember and not make the same mistakes. And also remember God's promise of love and forgiveness. Jeremiah calls on his scribe Baruch to write down his words, and then the scroll is taken to the king. The scroll is read to King Jehoiakim. He listens, takes the scroll, and slowly tears it into pieces, throwing it into the fire. 
the prophet's words indeed come true, and the people of Judah, the southern kingdom, are carted off into exile. But in the midst of this terrible chaos come words of hope and consolation, which is our reading for today. Jeremiah tells the people that in the midst of this difficult ordeal, in the face of chaos, God will be present in a very up-close and personal way. God's stubborn love for us will never let us go. A love that will seep into every pore of our being until we love as God loves us. In my message today, I will talk about what we can do in the face of chaos. We listen to our reading. The reading for today comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Here ends the reading. Our reading from Jeremiah really spoke to me this week and continues to speak to me. It is hope in the midst of a lot of suffering. We are in a pandemic. A pandemic. The word itself is beginning to really sink in in what it means. We all know someone who has COVID. We all know someone whose loved one has died because of COVID. This text is hopeful for me because God made a promise then and continues to act on that promise. God's stubborn love for us will never let us go. A love that will seep into every pore of our being until we do love as God loves us. It is hopeful because God promises to teach us, to show us what we can do when life as we know it is in chaos. We can love like God loves us. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of chaos, we can love no disease, no person can take that away from us. As we face the chaos ahead, some very difficult weeks, I think it is vital to remember that God has written God's love on our hearts. It is a part of our DNA. And in spite of the hardship, divisiveness, rampant racism, we can love. 
Love changes things. It changes us. It changes us as we give love, and it changes those who receive our love. I'd like to illustrate the power of this love with a letter that was published in the editorial section of the Star Tribune on Friday, November 13th, 2020. It was written by Professor Ufa Steka. It was titled, The America That Liberated Me Has the Strength to Overcome. Professor Steka writes, America to me was something decent, generous, and good, something you can trust. I know it can still be. Professor Steka writes, I was born during the Second World War and lived with my mother in an apartment building only a few hundred feet away from an ammunition factory in Karlsruhe, Germany. One night, together with the neighbors, accompanied by the shrill sounds of alarm sirens, we were herded into the dark basement, lit only by a candle. Soon afterward, the booming sound of falling bombs, followed by the shaking of the house. Above all was the sound of sobbing adults and the crying of scared children. The Americans bombed the factory, was the whisper in the basement. My mother held me tight in her arms with each explosion, and this went on for many, many weeks. Every night when the sirens sounded, we grabbed our blankets and my mother's little backpack, and we went down into the dark and waited and cried and hoped. Finally, the bombing stopped. The factory was destroyed, but the apartment blocks were unscathed. Now the conversations in the hallways of our apartment went something like this. The Americans spared us. They just hit the factory. This was my second time I heard about the Americans. Soon there would be a third. The women's conversations now centered around the question of which army would be occupying our town and around the horror and the fear and danger of having to face the abuse and possible rape at the army's hands. Let us pray that it be the Americans, my mother said. They don't rape. Although I did not understand this thing, that my mother and other women feared, nor who the Americans really were, I folded my hands and prayed for their arrival with my mother and her friends. A few days later, they all jumped up to the windows, pulled open the curtains and cried out, the Americans are coming. We hugged each other. My mother held me up to the window so I could see the green trucks with the star rolling slowly onto our street. The war was over and the Americans had come. Some months later, the school opened. On the first day, we ran excitedly to the doors and there in front of the school was the big green truck with a star on its door. The men standing on the truck smiled and they filled each of our containers with hot chocolate and handed out raisin buns. The food was so welcome. We were all starving. I later learned the name for this program, Quaker Food. It was part of the Marshall Plan. All of these experiences left early imprints of America on my heart. America was something decent and generous, something good, something you could trust. The truck with the star and the hot chocolate would reliably show up every day at school 
rain or shine, and did so for well over a year. During my later student years, I worked in the kitchen of the American Military Hotel in Wiesbaden as a dishwasher. This is where I met my first Native American. We became a team watching out for each other. I often wish that I had his name and address and could write to him. I would like him to know that he is still remembered. I also recall my first meeting with an African American. I met him on a streetcar where he gave me my life's very first orange. Mother hung the orange on the Christmas tree, and on that Christmas Eve, two families shared this gift received from this American soldier. I wish I could thank him and shake his hand. After graduating from the University of Frankfurt with a degree in special education, I received a scholarship to the University of Minnesota. I spent the next 50 years working to improve the lives of severely handicapped children, terminally ill children, Native American children, and children living in poverty in South America. I was honored to receive two Fulbright fellowships for my work with special needs children in Ecuador I tried to give back for all that I had received. Most importantly, I became a citizen of the United States of America. The moral standards that came with their star on the truck door and the blue passport with the eagle have set a high bar and proved to be a challenge. I've had to learn that there is also a painful side to my America that has to be carried. But my America is generous and knows forgiveness and knows grace. It has the strength for self-correction. Therein lies my hope during these challenging times. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, United States of America. Ufa Steker is a professor of psychology in the department at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Ufa's letter illustrates that the stubborn love of God demonstrated to us in Jesus is in us all, all around of us, is part of our DNA, our psyche. It's written on our hearts and on our brains, every cell of our being. So as we anticipate some difficult weeks ahead, chaotic weeks ahead, with traditions upended, things that we had looked for canceled, weddings, receptions, holiday gatherings, families isolated, schools on distant learning, we can focus on what we can do, not what we can't do. Yes, we need to honor the sadness, but we can also focus on what we can do, and that is, we can love. We can love courageously. No one or any disease can take that away from us. We can love.
Thank you for joining with me in prayer. If you have a prayer request, please submit your request at nativitychurch.org and click on prayer request, or you may call 612-781-2766 and leave a message stating that this is a prayer request. We may be praying separately, but the Spirit of the Living Christ joins us together in community. Please pray with me. Loving God, your, your love is beyond comprehension. You love us even when we push you away. In your wisdom, you give us the ability to love as you love us. As we face some very difficult weeks ahead, help us to remember that your love is part of us, part of our DNA, written on our hearts, and in spite of the chaos, we can love. Help us to remember that love changes things, transforms things. As we seek to break the cycles of systemic racism, help each of us to stand up in our own way for human dignity and respect. Help us to live and love like Jesus. Guide the work of Nativity's dismantling racism team as it seeks to set goals. We pray for good government, for we know that a country divided against itself cannot stand. So we pray for wisdom and courage for our leaders. Wisdom and courage in dealing with a pandemic wisdom and courage as they deal with change. May we all work together for the common good. We lift up those who long for healing in body, mind, and spirit, especially those listed on our prayer page, which you'll find on our webpage at nativitychurch.org. We pray for those who are ill with COVID, ethoplastic, Sean Sherman, Mary Ellen Hammer, Randy Seafelt, Roger Tenney, Doris Gerke, Ephraim Olani, and all those we name silently before you. We are mindful of family members who are absent one from another during this pandemic traditions that are upended and changed, families that are now distant when they would normally be together, special events canceled like weddings. Reassure us as we wait and watch. Help us to be patient with one another as we deal with this virus. We lift up our healthcare workers and all essential workers, that they not grow weary in their helping. Give them the strength they need to carry on your ministry of healing. And we thank you for those who have working, who have worked and are working diligently to bring us a vaccine. We ask that you comfort all who are grieving and we remember the family and friends of those whose loved ones have died during this coming week and years past, especially those who are remembering Mary Ruth Beeman and Sylvester Kramer and Christopher Livingston. Finally, we are grateful, grateful for the community of faith we are gathered into called Nativity. Help us to move into the future honoring God, following Jesus, serving neighbor, loving courageously and living generously. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, everyone. I want to tell you a little bit about giving here at Nativity. During these past months of the pandemic, 
Many of you have stepped up and made extra gifts. And I'm happy to report that we are stable financially and that your giving at the present time is greater than our expenses. We are concerned about the upcoming season of finals in November and December, but we are grateful. And as part of your giving, I want to tell you about some things during this Thanksgiving season and Christmas season that uh, might be of extra attention for you. First of all, many of us are sheltering at home as the virus is spreading. However, there are many who do not have a safe place to shelter in, especially teens. Nativity has partnered with Lutheran Social Service of Minnesota to help teens without homes find safety, to develop skills, and to receive resources to eventually live independently. One of the things we do each Christmas season here at Nativity is to provide gifts to encourage and build a hopeful spirit in teens without a home. We call it Nativity Christmas Outreach for Youth, and our Lutheran Social Service Circle here is once again coordinating efforts in order to brighten the holiday season for youth who do not have a home. Because of COVID this year, we are asking people to give a financial gift. Previous years, we would provide lists of items that you could purchase, and these would be distributed, but this year, we would like you to consider a financial gift. You can make a check out to LSS Christmas Youth Outreach. Um, I'm sorry, make the check out to Nativity with the memo LSS Christmas Outreach, or you can use Venmo to make your payment, search for at Nativity Lutheran, and just note it, LSS Christmas Outreach. We are approaching Thanksgiving, and it's easy to be focused on all the things that are putting a hindrance on our life, like the pandemic, some of the concerns we have about the divisiveness in the United States. But we can come together, and we can still love, and we can give thanks. And so our Thanksgiving worship will be online, but with a little twist. It will have input from the community. I want to remind you that we are grateful for your giving, and it would be especially helpful this year if you would consider an automatic withdrawal giving using Simply Giving. You can go to our website, nativitychurch give, and you can set up that recurring withdrawal. It helps with our cash flow. Also, if you can make a special year-end gift, it would be appreciated. You can do that as well by going to nativitychurch.org slash give and make a one-time gift or increase your giving. You can also use PayPal or, as I said, Venmo. And of course, you can always mail your checks in or your offering envelopes. Our address is 3312 Silver Lake Road, St. Anthony, Minnesota, 55418. I am grateful for your generosity. Thank you. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole
got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the Let us pray. Generous Creator, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us with grace and with mercy. May God look on us with favor and give us peace. Amen. courageously live generously. Thanks be to God.
of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess Him, King of glory now. Jesus is Lord, King of glory now. He emptied Himself as a slave yet free. Jesus, 